recent presentation. Also, very interesting insights, and uh, thank you for moderating that. Ah, so we, we're now recording again. Well, excellent. So, good morning to all of those of you who are just joining us. Uh, welcome to the first day of the City of Illyria uh, Hackathon. We'll be creating digital innovations to benefit the community and, uh, you know, general life of the town of Illyria. We've already had a couple of fascinating early morning talks, um, and we look forward to having a full afternoon of uh, further talks and further support activities designed to help people participating in this hackathon think through the innovations they're going to have and uh, how best to do it. All of which, of course, is leading up towards the uh, submission of presentations tomorrow night for the competition elements of what we're up to. Now, there's a lot uh, to say about all of this. I've been asked by my fellow organizers to uh, give a couple of quick plugs before I hand over to the mayor. Um, so uh, we are looking for people to join a couple more of the teams uh, if they have time. Um, which teams was it, Teresa? I know I lost information on the teams. Uh, yes, the dog training and pop-up event kit team are still looking for team members. So if anyone is still looking for a team, please feel free to pop into those. Um, and just as a quick note, you know, if you are worried at any stage about making the recordings and, you know, our fear you might have to dash out of a, an important innovation conversation you know, as you create your idea, um, please don't worry. All of these recordings, are, uh, all of these talks are going to be recorded and you'll be able to listen to them at your leisure. So, you know, whatever works best for you. So it's now my pleasure uh, to hand over to um, the man whose vision has helped uh, bring us all together uh, for this event, um, our chief partner and the chief partner of, of Windstream, uh, Mayor Frank Whitfield uh, of the City of Illyria. Mayor, over to you. Thanks, James. And then good morning to everyone. Uh, glad to uh, greet you all again and I hope that you all had a good night's rest. I, I got the chance to get some report outs from some of the teams last night and it uh, sounds like there's a lot of progress being had uh, on all the teams. Um, and as, as was mentioned, we still have room for you to join the team. Um, I was going to pull up a quick PowerPoint and show you all the teams that um, we know exist. And then there was new teams that were formed yesterday. I know the Gaming Lounge team, they got formed yesterday and they're already kind of moving full speed ahead. So that was kind of exciting as well. But uh, as, as was mentioned, we got the dog training for youth idea that was submitted. And this was around uh, training young people on how to train dogs. It was uh, after school, out of school, social emotional play, as well as a job training play. We had the kitchen incubator uh, with the Neighborhood Alliance and uh, transforming their new kitchen they're developing to not only be a service for uh, feeding those who are at risk, seniors and homeless, but also during those off hours, having a, a business kitchen uh, incubator. And, and we learned some really cool things about how they're looking at how to utilize technology uh, to schedule things. So I might give, give you all some space to do some report outs this morning. Um, we have the group that was around this whole adventurous bike uh, uh, amenity. And so I'm hoping that group is getting organized today and starts to put some meat on the bones of that idea. Um, the other piece was around this pop-up event kit, and this, this was uh, being led by Terry, and uh, they're, they're looking for folks to help out with this event as well, I mean, with this team. Uh, we have the Winter Market for Small Business with Mary Bryan, looking for folks to join that team as well. This uh, Community Transportation for Youth, uh, we're looking for folks to join that team as well. And uh, the Life Skill for Middle and High School students, and I know their team is, is pretty strong, but they could still use more members to help out. Uh, so I thought I'd maybe provide some space for anyone from the teams. If you wanna share a quick report out, uh, just raise your hand, you click the raise hand button. And uh, you know, I see Mary's on here, I see Alicia. Alicia, do you wanna give a report out in terms of how your group has uh, been going so far? I'm gonna unmute you here in a second. Good morning morning. Um, so we are working through um, sort of integrating the original vision for the kitchen um, and how Neighborhood Alliance would utilize the kitchen space and trying to integrate that with the entrepreneurship side of it and how that would fit with 
um, you know, entrepreneurs who want to use the kitchen space in our off hours. So it's sort of that integration of the two that we're really working through and what that might look like, what hours might be available, what the associated costs might be um, for entrepreneurs who want to try to use the kitchen space. Um, so those, that's kind of where we've started and we'll be working through that some more today and, um, you know, trying to figure out how to integrate technology into that. Thank you, Alicia, and good luck with everything. It sounds like the, you got a strong team there that's working with you as well. Um, so for Ter I know Terry and, um, and Mary were both looking for folks to join their team. So do either one of you want to uh, share more about your idea and maybe do some recruiting? And go for it. I see you're unmuted, Terry. Go for it. Well, I, first of all, I really appreciated Hamill's, Hamill Pearsall's presentation this morning because it speaks exactly to what I've envisioned happening with the pop-up event kit. And she was talking about how neighborhoods can be impacted positively or negatively with their green space and also with the things that happen in that green space. And what I'm talking about doing is basically the same thing. Take First of all, taking the pop-up event kit closer to the neighborhood rather than inviting people downtown to the same venue all the time or wherever that happens to be, the football stadium, wherever, whatever town that happens to be in, rather than having it in the same place all the time, have it in a different, have the events in the different places in the city that we'd like to highlight, that we'd like to focus, that we'd like people to see and have the event there. What we're talking about is a mobile event. And having the event in the spaces that are within the cities, within the neighborhoods rather, rather than in the middle of downtown. Everybody knows where the downtown is. Everybody knows who lives in the downtown. Nobody really knows who lives over in that real, by that really nice park on the other side of town. And that's what I'm trying to talk about is getting, getting an event, pop-up event kit to take that dynamic, not only to the rec center, which is kind of in a close proximity to the neighborhood, but I'd really like to take an event into the neighborhood. Pick a neighborhood. See what yeah. I would like to have, would have liked to had Hamill talk about how the dynamic would change when you invite people into the neighborhood for an event rather than simply to the downtown. How the interaction would change. How the um, I don't know how the, how the emotional impact would change, how the impact on the neighborhood would change, what would happen to the people in that neighborhood. Would some people rise to the occasion and want to help out? Would other people say, well, you know, we really need this focused on our neighborhood. It would start conversations that wouldn't ordinarily happen in a more public space, starting conversations That's in a more private space. And yeah. then in fact, we reintroduce ourselves to each other. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the powerful things about this idea is that uh, we're going to have an opportunity to learn what is the impact when we uh, create some of the same amenities that town squares have with staging and seating. Um, when we when we're able to just pop those things up inside of neighborhoods, what will be the impact? So again, if you want to join that group, uh, the event pop up kit, you'll be able to join that team. Uh, when we break into the small, uh, into the Zoom rooms, and you can just join, join from the Slack. Uh, Teresa or, and, or, and or James, if somebody right now wanted to join that group from the call, is there a quick way for them to just click and join on the uh, pop-up event team? Um, if they could just let an organizer or any, anywhere on Slack know that they want to join, then we can just move them right in there with no problem. Um, and yeah, I think, as you said, just to um, reiterate there, so I think the team for youth life skills has, is complete. So um, there's four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five people in there. So I think that one's all good. Then the, no, sorry, this is the winter market, five people in there, all good. Youth life skills has four people, also perfect. Study hall has four people as well. Um, the kitchen incubator has five, uh, four people as well. So this is all good. The only ones that are still missing um, teammates are the pop-up event kit and the dog training for youth. 
pop up event, we have two. And dog training for youth, we only have um, cage, only one for now, the team lead. So those two are really the ones um, that we would like and, to and have. And I know yeah, the other one was Mary Bryan. Mary Bryan wanted some more local people to join her group. So Mary, why don't, why don't you talk about the, the winter business market and then uh, hopefully we can get some locals to join. Yeah, good morning. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. My my key focus, our group does have five people, but the thing is, I'm the only local resident in the group. So I'm looking for at least one other person to join the group. But um, the, the key is, you know, getting the winter market going and focusing on small business, because eventually what we would like to see is these vendors, um, small businesses come into the downtown area and open storefronts, which would mm -hmm. be advantageous to the downtown area. Yep. So yeah, we're looking for locals to join that group still. And again, you have until, uh, I think we said 11, we were gonna cut off teams uh, 11 this morning. So if you wanna put on social, hey, join my team. Um, I think we wanted to try to limit it to 10 or less people on each team. But if you wanna put that out there, Feel free to put it out on social that, hey, come join my team on the hackathon. Again, the top three teams, once the judging is done, will uh, receive a $1,000 cash prize that that team can then divide amongst themselves. So some people might want to keep their team small, but it's better to have a bigger team so you can have more innovation and more chance to win. Uh, so it's okay to kind of divide the pie because you know many hands make light work. Um, so I, again, just want to encourage you all to, uh, to join a team. What those teams are working on is a slideshow uh, that they'll be presenting tomorrow that'll have answer all the questions that the judges will be looking for in terms of how well have you defined the problem, talk about your solution, how feasible and viable is that solution, how capable is your team or, or, or a team to pull this idea off, and then um, how much impact is this idea gonna have? And they'll be judged on that criteria. And then uh, over the week, and it's gonna be recorded, your presentation will be recorded. And then over the week, the judges will be looking at uh, your pitch deck as well as your video and presentation, and then uh, make a decision by the end of the week. And as I mentioned yesterday, this is just the beginning. This isn't the end point once the prizes are announced. The goal is for us to actually see if these ideas can go to the next level and actually happen. And um, the reason why we chose the categories we did was because we wanted to align it with the American Rescue Plan funds. And those categories of community violence prevention, mental health and social emotional health, uh, job training, tourism, small business assistance, after school care, uh, those were all areas that the American Rescue Plan says that the resources can be used uh, for. So that's the reason why we wanted to make sure your ideas align with those pieces so that if this catch is some momentum, we can actually put, try to advocate for some resources to get put behind it. So that's the reason for that. The other piece that we didn't talk a lot about yesterday I want to mention is that through our partnership with Case Western and even Lorain County Community College, we learned yesterday is going to be a part of this as well. And I'll let least speak to the LCC. But uh, Case Western has what they call X Lab. And it's, um, uh, it's through the VO Institute for Entrepreneurship. And what they do is support uh, small business and startups uh, that are generated specifically for those affiliated with Case Western. So because we have Case students on many of these ideas, they've opened the doors to say, hey, if there's a team that could use this X lab to help incubate their idea, we'll take them on. So uh, not only do you have the opportunity to win cash prize, but you also have the opportunity to win and be a part of the X lab, which will give you a set of resources and support to really help you take your idea to the next level. And then we learned yesterday uh, that the community college also, Lorraine County Community College is also going to be uh, utilizing their uh, launch pad, their incubator to assist with these ideas as well. And I don't know, Lisa, if, do you have something you want to report out on that? Sure. Um, Lorraine County Community College um, has uh, Neil Neck is their uh, incubator, and they are willing to incubate at least one idea. She didn't put a number to it. Um, there are three staff members who are um, engaged in the and they're very excited. Yeah, thank you, Lee. So yeah, the community college is also going to be another resource. I know one of the things uh, Mary Bryan and I discussed last night was 
when we do this winter market and we identify these entrepreneurs who might be really successful and we want to see them take their business to the next level, what type of supports do we have available for the small businesses? We know we have the SPDC, but what other resources are available? And uh, it's exciting that the community college has stepped up and they're going to be one of those resources that you can tap into. So again, just want to encourage you all to you know, invite people in to your teams. There's a lot of work that's happening on the Slack. We set up these Zoom rooms so that you all can have some FaceTime to talk with one another and do some planning. But a lot of the actual organizing work is happening on the Slack. And then tomorrow by midnight, we want to have your presentations complete uh, so that over the week our judges can uh, judge the ideas. So the next piece we have here, uh, I'm super excited about. Um, one of the key components of this whole hackathon and engaging with Case Western, as was mentioned before, uh, this is where I got my MBA. And while I was getting it, one of the professors I had was Young Jin Yu. And uh, he teaches a class on human-centered design. And I first got introduced to this concept by the gentleman who's going to be speaking to us this morning years ago. Uh, if any of you watch TED Talks, if you love, you know, watch TED Talks, they did a TEDx Cleveland years ago, and I attended uh, with some colleagues of mine, and, um, and this gentleman, Kapum Lee, he spoke, and it made everything make sense to me. Uh, for years, I always tried to wonder why I was, uh, why I thought about problems the way that I did, why I um, tried to address solutions the way that I did, and I never had the language or understanding, and after hearing Kip's presentation, I realized that's how I think, and um, and it just opened my mind to there's a whole world out there around human-centered design. So I'm super excited for him to introduce this concept to us all. And I'm hoping our leaders on the call who are leading organizations and leading people really take as much out of this as you can because uh, this has transformed the way I, I plan programming, the way I think about programming, the way I think about services, the way I think about our operations as a city, uh, some of the exercises that uh, you can go through with this human-centered design, really help you to meet the needs of the people you're trying to serve. And so uh, I'm excited to welcome Kip uh, to the Zoom. And um, Kip, whenever you're ready, I'd like, you know, I know you got your whole spiel set up for you, but I did want to do a little chat with you beforehand too. So welcome, Kip. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good can morning. You do you remember that TEDx talk? I do, I do, and uh, Mayor Frank, what um, what nice words, and uh, you know, just uh, yeah, I'm 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 encouraged. I got to check out that talk again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you, appreciate it, and um, wow, so exciting to hear you uh, talk about design and how important it is. And as a designer, I am biased and. I do think you're right. There's a great opportunity to bring design, design thinking, human-centered de design. These are these are terms that people use. And how can it help serve our civic institutions and what we're gathered here together to um, explore together? So thank you. Appreciate it. No doubt. No doubt. And thank you for being willing to speak with us today. Again, I I, I encourage you all if you're on social. Uh, to go ahead and post out on social for folks to, to tune in. We are recording uh, this as well, so it'll be shared later, but there's nothing like being here live. You can ask your questions. We're going to provide some space to ask questions live. And again, as, as if you're a leader out there uh, that's leading an organization, leading people, trying to serve people, tune in, buckle up, and uh, we're going to have some really good discussion here about human-centered design. So uh, Kip, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I do have some slides. I don't want to get lost in the slides. Uh, given the uh, audience and, and, and the folks engaged, happy to make this as conversational as, uh, as, as, uh, as we can. So feel free to stop me. Um, I'm not thinking about this as any kind of formal presentation, but I do have some slides and some thoughts. And uh, what a privilege it is to uh, work with you all, especially as uh, we're still, I understand, at the beginning of, of the hackathon in many ways. So I thought it would be appropriate to share with you some thoughts about um, problem framing, 
problem setting. These are kind of the terms that, that I use, but really just getting the problem right. And I think uh, even just five, 10 minutes ago, Mayor Frank, you, you mentioned the importance of finding a, a worthwhile, worthy problem. And uh, that's what I wanna focus on today. Um, happy to launch my slide share. I have about 12 slides. And um, again, please feel free to stop me, raise your virtual hand. And uh, I don't have all the answers, but um, we'll do my best to be maybe provocative, maybe encouraging and tell you also if I don't have the answer to your question, but maybe that's something that we can explore together with uh, everyone on the call. Um, Kip, Mayor Frank, just um, let me just stop the recording and start it again so that we have this as a separate recording. 